Okay. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. We just I think we oh got a little pause. Hey everybody, we're getting ready to get started and we're excited to be here. I see Instagram is, is loading up. If I have my glasses on Instagram, I'll be giving y'all some more shout outs, but I'll shout out y'all later on. Uh you have to move over a little bit. No, then you be gone. No, I'm fine. I can lean okay. over this way. Lean in. Lean in. Can y'all see if it ain't the picture, most picture perfect? But let me see something. There, there you, you go. go. All right. You know, you know, made that better. And so, hey, Instagram. Hey, Facebook family. I see you hey, all conference call. Uh, getting ready. Conference call folks to slowly uh, plug you in. Uh, y'all, I'm going to look like an old man. I'm going to get up and see who's close up on here. And so, Lord have I know. Mercy. I'm sorry. Lord have I say she is witty is on here. And Bryce, Bryce and Roach is on here. Hey, family. And uh, Kev Wright is on here. The young folk are on Instagram. Techmon is on here. Mr. Chef uh, Fito, Fido is on here. Mr. No, Chef Fido I have my All right, yeah, but Terry Capito's on. Terrence Jackson's on. Hey, Terrence. Uh, so we got our marriage partners coming on. Uh, Charles, uh, uh, Charlene uh, Neil Dillard is on. Uh, Stephanie May is on. Hey, Steph. Hey, Charlene. Uh, Best, uh, Vanessa Best Tyson is on. We see all of our uh, marriage partners are coming on. I'm going to start calling y'all our marriage partners because uh, you all are faithful. And we want to say thank you for being faithful every thank Wednesday you. evening uh, at 10 p.m. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I always got to uh, say this for the new people who are, are watching the first time. I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record. But um, we are uh, Reverend Skip and Reverend Beverly, and we're the leaders over at um, First Baptist Church Lenard's Marriage Ministry. And we've been uh, overseeing the ministry now uh, under the direction of Pastor Jenkins and First Lady Trina Jenkins for 10 years now. And we count it an honor and a joy uh, to serve in that capacity. Um, I wanted to say, um, uh, y'all just keep liking and sharing and tagging. And if you can do it uh, two or three times uh, during the week or four or five times during the week, I try to uh, share it uh, at least once a, uh, once a day uh, until we get to the day. And the reason why I do that is, and it kind of leads into one of our announcements, is that you know in our communities in particular, uh, but with COVID-19, it's just not our community, it's every ethnic and cultural community, there's an uptick in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we are, we are good with the people or couples that are connected to our marriage ministry, whether you're an official member of the church or not. What I love about what we do is open to everybody. And so the classes are open to both members and non-members. The focus studies are open to both members and non-members. The discipleship ministries are open to both members and non-members. Because our goal as a church at First Baptist Lenard is to ensure that everybody's equipped with the proper tools to make better choices, especially in marriage, so that the devil is defeated. And we begin as a Christian community to decrease the number of separations and divorces in second, third, and fourth time marriages. Now, you know, uh, it's, it's hope because even if you've been divorced before and now you're married and you're into a second marriage or a third marriage, we've seen couples here at First Baptist once they apply the principles, that second time marriage or third time marriage turns into 25 years, 30 years of marriage. And so there's hope. If you are currently married, we don't want you to get excited and say, oh, that's my ticket to get divorced because the second time's the charm. is not the charm. It's twice the amount, if not three times the amount of work to make a second time or third time marriage happen. And that means no matter what's going on in your life or your marriage from your spouse, your husband or your wife, second time, third time, you have to be committed and sold out uh, to serve God and apply his principles in, in spite of what's going on. So second time marriages aren't easy. I, but it, I just want to doable. say that. But they're doable That's if you believe right. in Christ. Uh, but if you're married, we want you to look at it. We want you to stay married to the one you with. Whether it's the first time, second or third, just stay married from this point forward with, to the one you are with. And so um, uh, but in ref come on now. <laughs> yeah, right. and so um, I'm saying that the best advice is an uptick. And uh, I'm gonna love my baby. And uh, we have something on Saturday from our domestic violence ministry, which is a part yes, of our family life yes. department. And it's called the Man Box. And it's this Saturday at 12:15. It's open to everybody. It's, it's, it's free of charge. It's going to be on Zoom. And we have a guest speaker, his name is Tony Porter, and he started a nonprofit called, I think, a call to manhood or, 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 or called to be men. And he's excellent. And he's excellent. Yeah. And, and what he saw early on was, in his own experience and as he helped work with other men as a social worker, 
He said, let's try to get it on the front end of this whole domestic violence thing so we can retrain uh, a, 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 a man to rethink his manhood. It's not all machoism. It's not, not crying. It's, it's not beating your fist up against the wall or another person. If we can teach a young man or a man or a young teenage boy how to be a man, then he is less apt in his adulthood or late adulthood or in marriage to to exhibit signs of being a domestic abuser. And so we really encourage you, if you have somebody who is struggling with identifying uh, with his manhood, that he has false definitions of what it looks like, because it's not all macho, it's not all rah, 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 it's not all hardcore, uh, to the core, uh, we strongly encourage you uh, to have uh, your sons, your, uh, your, your nephews, your husbands, uh, especially if a brother has a hot temper, uh, to, to listen to Tony Porter this Saturday at 12.15. Just go to the church's website and they'll tell you, look for the e-card, you see Tony, uh, Tony Porter, and you see the, it's called the Man Box. And again, it's 12.15 and it's part of our hey, domestic violence ministry. Yeah, and if you um, lose sight of that, just send them an email, domesticviolence at fbcglenarden.org, mm -hmm. domesticviolence at fbcglenarden.org, and they will email you back with the Zoom information. With the Zoom information, okay. so that so that's good. So we want you all to participate in that. Hey, you also want to say thank you. You know, last uh, Thursday was me and Beverly's fifteenth wedding anniversary, hey, and so we nice. just uh, <laughs> we just want to say thank you for the calls, for the texts, for it the cards. It was amazing, y'all. We want to thank you for the gifts. Uh, we're going to show on our, our fellowship couples fellowship. That's not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we're going to show a little highlight of what happened on that day. Yeah. Uh, because our children really made the day special and our, our nieces and nephews really made the day special. So uh, we just want to say personally, um, thank you so much. If you, if you reached out to us in any way, our goal over the next two weeks is to respond back to you with a heartfelt thank you. So thank you for recognizing our anniversary. It really thank felt God. good. Thank and you. then uh, on that note, uh, every month now, since we can't do it in-house, we're, we're doing it on our virtual fellowship, which is the second Saturday of every month on Facebook Live at 7 p.m., we want to encourage you, if you are celebrating your anniversary for the month of June, that uh, you send us your picture and get the correct spelling of your names and then uh, the date uh, that you got married. Don't need the year, but the date and then the number of years married. And we would love to put you on the, the, the latter part of our video. So the way it works is we uh, have a, a the, the video is uh, after we do a teaching, we show the anniversaries for that particular month. The month of May was the first month that we did it. It was a success, and we got a lot of positive feedback, and so we're going to continue to do it. And so if you're watching, so some people say, I didn't see myself. Well, you, you, you didn't watch the fellowship to, to the end. end. You, you got to watch it to the end. Wait to the benediction. Yeah, you got to wait to the end. That's you get your blessings. That's it. So watch it <laughs> to the end, and then you'll see the fellowships, I mean, the uh, anniversaries for the month of June. Uh, just send it. So you could, there's a couple of ways you can send it. My wife asked how you can send it. You could um, send it just by in this in this feed right here. Just um, uh, let us know who you are and, and, and just put your couple's post picture there. Or you can reach out to us as at, at Real Talk Real Marriage. How can they do that? Or what's the email address? What's oh, email? couples at fbc. That's what it is. Glenarden.org. Couples at fbc. Glenarden.org. Okay, so, at FBC Glenarden.org. So it's C O U P L E S, the at sign FBC, as in First Baptist Church, Glenarden, G L E N A R D E N dot org, O R G. And you send your picture there. That's probably the best way to do it. Send your picture there again, the correct spelling of your name, the month and date of your. Uh, uh, wedding anniversary and number of years married and a lot of people are doing before and after pictures too I love them um, and so right now we have people that have been married that are celebrating the month of June have been married as little as three years to as much as 41 years and so it's open to everybody and that's what we love about our ministry we well, have something year. for right well, but I'm just saying what we have right now oh, I got you. what we have right now and so that's what I love about our ministry it's open to everybody uh, whether you're a member or non-member and uh, we, we do a, we, we, we attempt to do a good job of work, reaching out uh, to a, a lot of folks, uh, or a lot of married folks, that, different age ranges, I mean, a different number of years married. But and again, that fellowship is on the 13th. The 13th at 7 p.m. Yes. on Facebook Live. And again, our marriage partners are coming on board, so thank you so much uh, for coming on board. If I can't acknowledge you by name, 
uh, now. I, you know, I definitely will later on, but I'm going to get the old again, baby. We'll see who's on Lord We got Veronica, uh, the, Veronica's on, Veronica Tway, I think that's her spell, her okay, spelling. Okay. But she's the marriage partner. Actually, you're on there faithfully every Wednesday. Uh, Carol Ward, marriage partner. Uh, Don Ice, uh, marriage partners. The uh, Ice are a part of our, uh, the Wards and the Ice are a part of our marriage uh, uh, ministry team, and so we're excited about it. We have more folks coming in on uh, Instagram. We have Camilla, I mean, Contella Mills is on there. We have uh, Bernice B. Hey, you joined us. Thank you so much. Um, we have uh, the Carters, Dr. Carter is on there. Very good. Uh, and so we have also the bishops are on as well. So we just want to say thank you for being a part of it. What about no. Wisdom for Wives? Yes, Wisdom for Wives this Friday. Mm -hmm. Ladies, wives, go into Facebook, join our Wife for Life Facebook group, and join us on Friday at 7 p.m. We've been having an amazing time about what it means to love him, mm -hmm. love our husbands, what it means to love our husbands. I'm in part three, y'all. God has not allowed me to let it go. So join us as we share just for about 45, 35, 45 minutes on this Friday, 7 p.m., Facebook, um, Facebook Live mm -hmm. in our Wife for Life group. But you have to go on and join the group now so that you're ready for Friday when we get started. All right, baby. Any other announcements you want to yeah, share? Yeah, we're doing a premarital intensive. We are. You want to talk a little bit about that? The day we yeah, have it at all? Yeah, we're doing a premarital intensive. So those of you who are, are uh, know people who are getting married, mm -hmm. who think they want to get married, who are seriously dating, we are doing a premarital Engage. intensive. Engage. Engage. Marriage is next month. Yes. Get yes. the information. Right. It's June 26th. Mm-hmm. Um, and 27th, we're taking our 10-week class and condensing wow. it into a weekend. Yeah. So it's the evening of June 26th, and all day on the 27th is virtual. You can go onto our website, skipandbeverly.com, skipandbeverly.com, and get the registration information. Mm -hmm. But if you want the e-card and you want to share it with somebody else, it's on Real Talk, Real Marriage, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Yes. And it's also on Skip and Beverly on Facebook and Instagram. So right. please follow, like, and tag uh, that Absolutely. as well. We, you know, just help a marry, help a couple make a better decision. You know, I know, right? A better be choice. Prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Be prepared correctly. Yeah. Anything mm -hmm. else maybe you want to share? Um, let me see if I have any more announcements. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, our Women's Fellowship is this Saturday. All our right. Women's Gathering, First Baptist Church of Glenarm Women's Gathering is virtual this Saturday at um, 10 a.m. You can hop onto the church's website uh, first, fbcglenarden.org mm -hmm. backslash watch now. Mm -hmm. fbcglenarden.org backslash watch now. And or you can go on to our website. It's at 10 a.m. It's 10, 10 a.m. this coming Saturday. Okay, very 10 good. 10 a.m. this coming Saturday. Okay. It's going to be amazing. All right, very good. I think good. that's it. I think now. that's it for that. Yeah, it is. And so, what we want to talk about tonight, y'all, again, start off with a message, then a prayer again, like, share, tag throughout this conversation and prayer. And do it later on the week. But what we want to talk about tonight is shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Everybody say shake, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. I almost want to make it a full-fledged teaching uh, for a couple's fellowship. But what shake, what shake it up mean? Shake it up means we talked about last week, uh, don't be a roommate. Stop being roommates. Yeah. And one of the ways you can stop being a roommate is if you shake things up. Um, and so what does that mean? Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. That means you can't allow the routine of life. That's good. Because you become bored in your marriage. Right. Because God has given each one of us a certain level of creativity to think outside the box, to stay engaged and entertained and uh, experience fun activities with our, with our wife or with our husband. And we, things were kind of routine for some of us before COVID-19 and before the protests. But now, um, uh, uh, things, because we almost feel like, for, for some of us, the couples we're talking to, they almost feel as though they are trapped at home or stuck at home, um, and they're saying, well, I'm, I'm tired of him, or I'm tired of her, and I don't like him, or I don't like her. And the deal is, is that the routine that kind of numbs you to having fun uh, with your, um, uh, with your, with your, uh, with your, uh, uh, with your, with your spouse uh, that's causing you uh, to, to be angry because you can't do that normal routine, whether it's go to the grocery store on a certain day, the gym on a certain day, 
any type of sorority or fraternity meeting on a certain day or meet with your girlfriends on one night or meet with your male friends, your buddies on another night, play basketball here, uh, uh, play tennis there, whatever that stuff that you do, take your kids. The routine is kind of shattered, and so now you two are looking at each other, and so you have very little routine. Some of y'all are developing routines in your home which ain't good. You know, I, I get a little distancing so you can get work done and one person goes in one part of the house and another person goes in another part of the house or apartment or condo or townhouse where you have. But you don't want the routine to turn into boredom. Um, and so you got to shake things up and you have to do something a little different. Um, I, I recently saw couples walking in our cul-de-sac. In fact, it was uh, yesterday and I yelled out and said, oh, I see you walking in a cul-de-sac and a lot of couples now are walking in our neighborhood. And so that's one thing that she can do to shake things up. Now, Beverly has been getting on me. Let's walk, let's walk, let's walk. But we have allowed the, the, our schedules to conflict. So when she's ready to walk, I'm doing some work. And when I'm ready to walk, she's doing some work. So we have to do a better job of coordinating our work schedule, even at home, so that we can shake things up and, and, and walk. And that's something that me and Beverly enjoy uh, to do. Um, another thing, how you can shake things up, you can have a family game night or a couple's game night. Um, uh, and so what, is that, what does that look like? There's some interesting games out. We have, uh, we have uh, if you go online, I don't want to endorse any one company, but you have some couple's games that you can go online and purchase. They have dice, they have other things where you can get real creative with your, <laughs> with your, <laughs> real creative with your game playing, with your game playing. Um, Are you oh, playing these games with your spouse? You're playing with your spouse, yeah, just you and your spouse. Now, this is not the games I'm talking about playing, ain't, ain't family games, it's couples games. After hours, when you put people to bed, right, and not the other door. couples. Yeah, you just mean, you and yeah. them, right, and you and her, or me and Beverly, nobody else um, uh, in, in there. And so, some of you say, well, why should I do that? And then I, and then I asked God to show me, Bev, what scripture to look at. And he took me to the very first scripture. In the very first chapter, the very first verse, in Genesis chapter 1, and I have my notes this time, I have my glasses on. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what I love about that, when I first read that is, every day God created something different and new. But everything that he created, he said it had value. And so what does that mean for us as a married couple? That means that before I met Beverly, she had value because God created her. Before Beverly met me and married me, I had value. Together, we still have value, and we don't want the routine to, to let boredom set in, and you don't value the marriage, you don't value your husband, and you don't value your wife as God did. Now, we're made in the image of God, and that means that if he created everything, and he created something every day, and listen, he's creating stuff right today. I was just looking at how the birds were flying in the sky, and I was looking how the clouds don't stay in the same position, and Every day there is a slightly different position of a cloud that God is, is constantly creating because that he's our creator. And so he created the institution of marriage. He's the creator. He created us. He created us with gifts and talents and skill sets, not just to be used outside the home, but to be used inside the home as well. And so I want you to think about that if, if God is creator and we've made it into his image, then we also need to create. And so what are some of the things a wife can do to create? I, well, I got a couple. Yeah, yeah, I got some more. I got some more. You know, y'all can do a little role reversal. So if if so, so this is why. So if me and Belly first got married, um, I was cooking, and then my mother gave me some advice. She said, "Boy, you keep cooking, you're gonna be cooking for the rest of your life." And when I heard that, I stopped cooking. And so now Beverly wasn't the best cook, but now Beverly is a is just as good as cook as I am. I mean, she can. I don't know. No, yeah. No, I, I can do more impromptu, but she can follow a good recipe. Let the church say amen. And so she's been doing real good at it. And so I was asking God, I said, outside of walking on a more regular basis, basis so we can talk and hold okay. hands. But God said, why don't you switch it up? Why don't you, you know, you look at all these home cooking channels since you're home now because of COVID and everything. Why don't you start cooking and up, up your game on the creativity, the creativity of the meals you prepared. So instead of just doing spaghetti, let's venture out to some type of, you know, uh, uh, chicken Alfredo and make homemade Alfredo sauce. So instead of just making a hamburger, you know, make, make a really get a, a real good recipe for a meatloaf. You know what I mean? You know, for those of you who don't, the only thing I know about meatloaf is, is you can't mush it too much because something happens to it when you mush it too much. But you just kind of got to roll it. I mean, you got to just 
you gotta feel a little bit. But anyway, if I got a good recipe, let me know. Send it to, to our, our email address. But what God said, I want you to switch some things up. And so I'm gonna be switching up. Not every day, let the church say not every day, but I'm gonna switch up a few more days where Beverly's not in the kitchen and I will surprise them with more cooking. I actually started doing it and she didn't know what I was doing. I actually started doing it on Sundays because we would get up in the morning and she would like to watch TV or watch the Sunday service. You know, our Sunday service is 8, 10, and 12 at, on, at, eight, at on First Baptist Church in Arden. And so we all get up at 10 o'clock and then I noticed right after the service, she was struggling to put breakfast together and God said, why don't you switch it up, you know? Why don't you go there and get up early? Why don't, you, why don't you get up early? Why don't you start cooking breakfast? So when the kids come downstairs and Beverly comes downstairs, a meal is prepared and you all can watch the, 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 the service, you know, either, you know, while, y'all like to talk about food hot, y'all eat when the food is hot. Y'all can watch the service, you know, while, and you can eat while watching the service or by time it just right, because I can only watch the eight o'clock service and, and I'm in the space where we're watching the 10 o'clock service and cooking. Then, you know, after right after service, we can have a meal and we can discuss the, 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 the service. And I found that to be, uh, you know, creative. And so creative is, is going to, the, the, the depth of your creati creativity is going to be tied to the depth of your skill set or your experience or your talents or gifts. But I don't want you to be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone and break your routine to do something creatively. But the only way you're going to get there is if you spend time with God because he'll give you something that's unique to you and your marriage that uh, brings excitement and joy. I, I can talk about Gary and Wilma Matthias have this box set. And I know I'm getting it wrong, but they had this box set. Gary created this box set. I know. But I know. I know. I know, but he created. Was I know, but that was created. Okay. He created a okay. box set, okay. and he. I think that in the morning they had to pull out something as it, as, as it ties to what he or she wants the other to do something throughout the day. And you create. I think you create what those things are, mm -hmm. and then you might be uncomfortable with. It. So if you are uncomfortable walking around the house butt naked and your children are gone or you don't have no children, then maybe that's one of the things you have to pull out. And for the whole day you got to walk around the house butt naked. So I, I so just God ask God to give you the creativity, and He will give you the creativity. Sometimes y'all need to have be more courageous and creative in the conversations you have. When well, you really need to look at how you're doing your finances and, and rethinking that, look at how you have sex and rethinking sex, looking at how you uh, deal with in laws in the house, rethink that. And so I don't want us to fall, especially under the season of COVID nineteen, to allow the routine to you look at your spouse as boring. Or you look at your spouse as not fun because the, the creativity is there and it's for us to pull it out of each other. So if we go back to the scripture that Skip mentioned in the beginning, which was Genesis 1, mm -hmm. where it says, in the beginning, mm -hmm. God created the heavens and the earth. And then after God, the next day and the next day, each day, every right. day, at the end of the day, God said, and that's good. And that's good. So yeah. when you create or develop new things in your marital relationship to get out of the mundane, to get out of the routine, to shake things up, be sure you do something that when you look at the end of the day, you can say, that's good. That's good. The meal was good. The walk in the park was that's good. good. Walking around the house naked was good because you good. played the game. Right. You know what Whatever I mean? it, it is, it's good. And when any and you know something is good is when you engage in a fun activity right. that brings you two closer together as husband and wife and then pull you apart as husband and wife. And the, you do that some, some of y'all need to be reminded, and this is Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And so what better place to do good works within the, in the home itself? Right. We do, I know, I love how God has redirected our schedules. Because we used to do, a lot of us on this, on this, on this prayer call, a lot of us do a lot of good works outside the home. We do good works on our job, and people say, you know, Man, you're good, and we like what you do. You do good work at your church. You're at every meeting, and you're serving, and you're feeding the homeless, and you're clothing the poor, and you're just doing your ushering, and you're singing in the choir. You're doing so many wonderful things. You serve faithfully on your social organizations, whether it's a fraternity or a lodge or a sorority, and they say, man, you're good. But then when you come home, uh, uh, you ain't doing that good. All creative juices run out, you know. The well, honey do list this long. You helping everybody else out in the world. 
and not right. And so uh, even look at the honeydew list creatively, create, creatively. You know, how can um, I do something that I don't normally do that's not on the honeydew list, but I know my wife wants it done or I know my husband wants it done. Let me think outside the box and go ahead and do that thing without her or him asking me to do it. I just, I, you know, we just so good at so many other things. Good at being parents. Oh, you're the best mom or the best dad in the whole wide world. But we just, we don't bring that goodness sometimes because of routine. We don't bring that goodness and we, we don't experience within the context right. of our, our marital relationship. Right. And so I just want to encourage you all to do that. And so that's the, that's the creative message for today is that um, to break the routine, uh, be, don't be afraid to try new things, to think outside of the box. Some of y'all have bicycles that haven't been ridden in a long time. Get back on the bike and ride that bike. You know what I mean? Some of you uh, used to make clothes for your man. Go and break out the sewing machine and start sewing again. I mean, some of you brothers might be good at the sewing machine, so you know, I'm, you know, I ain't, yeah, I ain't good at it, but if you're good at sewing clothes, brother, then make, some, make a dress for your wife. Do something that's out of the box that's going to put a smile on your wife's face or husband's face. You know, y'all, Skip has been doing yard work. Mm -hmm. That's miracle. out of the box. It's a miracle. <laughs> and so he has just been making the yard look nice and mulching and weeding and um, just making sure the grass is, you know, um, growing and all of that. It's just, he has been doing a good, it's a miracle. It's a miracle, but I'm thinking Shake, outside the right, box. you shaking it up. Right, God said you are creative, so we need to be creative. Some That's of y'all, right. you know, you younger couples, don't be delaying making babies. Go on, y'all need to be creating some babies. And so don't don't allow routine, even within your home or your job, to cause you to be on a on, on a on a time schedule when you think you're gonna make a baby. Be creative. Get in that bedroom. Have some fun sexually. Have some fun with your right. friendship. Have some fun with your conversations. You know, I, th this is the time where if we spend more time with God, because He wired us to be like him in so many ways that our creative juices will begin to flow in our marriage and uh and we can treat our marriage like a good thing like like we know it is and so i just want to encourage you that if god created everything and we made it and we made in his image then he made us little mini creators and uh you're good your husband's good your wife is good your marriage is good treat it as such value it and if you don't value it because you have some alt or bitterness or unforgiveness, I'm going to challenge you to give it to God. Because just as God has forgiven you for so many things, uh, uh, known and unknown, God wants us to extend the same grace to our spouse so that value is uh, brought back into the relationship as, uh, as well as Christ. Amen. Amen. And so um, we're going to pray uh, for creativity to flow in your marriage. And we're going to pray... Uh, that uh, conversations can be had that t that kind of points you in the direction of what you all think is good about each other. Some of y'all need to do a goodness exercise where you list three or four or five things about your spouse. This is why you're good. You're good at cooking. You're good at making love. You're right. good at talking. You're good at cleaning the kitchen. You're good as a parent. Uh, you whatever you, you you're a good provider. Whatever that good you're a good budgeter. Uh, you're a good uh, Xbox player. Um, whatever that good thing is, write those five things down and really give your spouse uh, words of affirmation to validate that they are good. Because some of y'all haven't said that to your wife, that you're good, our marriage is good, right. and this is a good gift. And again, the gift comes from God, and I don't want you to forget that. And when you, when you connect to that, then um, you're able to appreciate and celebrate your bride or your, your, your groom, and you're able to become more creative and do more creative things. Oh, you know, man. I feel like I got a cake in the making too. You know, I can bake every once in a while too with a recipe. So, you know, just think outside the box during this time of COVID-19 and remember that your marriage is a good thing. It has value. Your wife is a good thing. She has value. Your husband's a good thing. He has value. Mm -hmm. And just everything that God created, he created the institution of marriage. He created you. He knew that you two were going to get married. So, Get back to the value of your marriage and so that you can view each other as a good thing so those creative juices can flow. Amen. 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 Let's Amen. pray. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for this time, God. I thank you for every couple that's, God, viewing tonight or listening in on the phone. God, you yes, know God. what they stand in need of. God, you know that we 
all need some help in shaking it up, God, and yeah. doing something new and creative in our marital relationship. God, give us creative ideas. Drop them in our head even now, oh God, so that we may freshen up our marriages, God, and we may feel more uh, uh, just elated about being married, God. Help us not to just survive, but help us to thrive yes, in our marital God. relationships, God. Give us the strength, God, to do what we can't do in and of ourselves, God. We thank you, God, that nothing is impossible with you. Yes. So, God, we pray that you guide us and direct us, God. So. People came on tonight very discouraged in our marital relationships, God, but we pray that when they get off the call tonight, God, they would be able to have conversations with each other, God, that they can come up with fresh things to do in their marriages, God. We pray, oh God, for those couples that are dealing with illnesses, God, we pray that your healing power will rest upon them, God. We pray, God, if there's a, a person in the marital relationship that's just been, God, just distant and not wanting to work on it, that you would do something new yes, on tonight, God, and cause them, God, to be willing to have a conversation, be willing to move forward, be willing to move in a direction that brings glory and honor to you, God. Help us, God, to humbly receive that spouse, God. Help us not to uh, 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 antagonize them or make them feel bad because it took them too long yes, to, to come to a decision to, to, to talk. But, God, help us to just receive them in humility and receive them in love. God, we're just so grateful for what you're doing in our lives, God. Yes, we're grateful for this time, God, to be home, to get back to the basics of loving each other and loving our kids and doing some of the things that, God, we were so far removed from, like cooking again and wa taking walks together and cleaning the house together and watching movies together. Lord, help us to get back to that place in a way, God, that we enjoy it, in a way that's creative, God. So, God, we just give all of our concerns to you on tonight, God, knowing that you're more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever think or imagine, God. So we just come, Lord, asking that you would just meet us right where we are. Yes, Father. Help us, God, to do what you would have us to do and not what we think we ought to do. God, so that your will will prevail. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I was opening my eyes a little bit because the batteries are dead on both the technology devices. So we'll be, we'll be signed out. Now, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. What were you doing? But, <laughs> I don't know, ain't nothing I can do about it. But I want to say real quick, as we were praying, God says some of you all have beautiful green spaces. You have decks and you have a nice outdoor spaces in the front of your house, the side of your house, and the back of your house. Create a picnic one day. Love it. You know, just create a picnic. Love make it. a lunch for your husband. Make a lunch for your wife. Go out to your deck. If you don't have a deck, we don't have a deck. Just spread out some chairs and uh, uh, a blanket. Make it nice. And just make it nice. You know, uh, that's what we want to encourage you all. Um, that's what we want to encourage you all uh, to do. Just make, just, just make it nice. I'm getting ready to uh, like, share, tag us. Because the battery is getting ready to go out. And I don't want to lose this thing. Only him, y'all. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Amen. Be encouraged and know that God is in control. Okay? Amen. Y'all have a good night. Amen. Well, finish. <laughs>